You're told it's normal for a car battery to die after two or three years. That's just how long they last, they say. But let me tell you something. They're not telling you the full story. Batteries can and should last longer. If yours keeps dying early, something's draining the life out of it and most folks never figure out what it is. So here's the deal. Sometimes your car's battery runs down even when you're not driving. That's usually because something's sneakily sucking juice while the engine's off. It might be a tiny light in your glove box that won't quit, a busted radio module doing who knows what, or even a charger left plugged in overnight. These little culprits, what we call parasitic draws, keep nibbling at the battery all night long. Next morning you hop in, turn the key, and all you get is that dreaded click-click. No start, no go. Happens more often than folks think, especially in older rides or ones with a bunch of aftermarket gadgets tossed in. Short trips are murder on batteries. Picture this. Every time you start your car, it pulls a good chunk of power from the battery just to fire up the engine. Now, if you're only driving five minutes down the road and back, that alternator, the thing that charges the battery while the engine's running, barely gets a chance to put that power back in. It's like trying to fill a bucket with a garden hose but shutting it off before the water gets past your ankles. Do that day after day, and your battery never fully recovers. Over time, it gets weaker, especially when the temperature drops. Then one frosty morning, you turn the key and… nothing. She's given up. This is especially tough on folks doing short hops around town. The engine starts fine all week, until it doesn't. The myth of maintenance-free. The old maintenance-free label? It sounds nice, but don't let it fool you. That just means you don't have to top off the water like we did back in the day. But that doesn't mean you're off the hook. Here's the thing. Over time, the metal posts, where your cables clamp onto the battery, can get all crusty with corrosion. White, green, flaky gunk. That stuff blocks the flow of electricity, kinda like plaque in an artery. Doesn't take much before your car starts cranking slow or electronics get weird. Folks blame the battery, but half the time it's just bad connections. So grab a wire brush and give those terminals a little love once in a while. A clean hookup means your battery can actually do its job, and might last a whole lot longer because of it. Most people forget it, but the old-timers never did. Heat kills batteries too, not just cold. Here's how it works. High temperatures bake the guts of your battery, speeding up chemical reactions and evaporating the internal fluids. That weakens the battery over time, even if it seems to crank fine on a summer morning. Park it outside in the sun day after day, or if your engine bay runs hotter than a cast iron skillet on a bonfire, that battery's cooking from the inside out. Then winter rolls in, and suddenly it won't start. Folks blame the cold, but really, summer did the damage. Winter just delivered the bad news. Your alternator might be lying to you. Just because your headlights shine and your radio hums doesn't mean your alternator's pulling its weight. A weak one can still run the show while you're driving, but it might be slacking off when it comes to putting power back into the battery. It's like using a funnel with a clog in it. Some juice gets through, but not nearly enough to top things off. So what happens? The battery keeps draining bit by bit, and before long, you're stuck blaming it for quitting, when all along it was just doing the best it could with what little charge it had. That's why us old hands always say, don't jump to conclusions. Get that charging system tested proper before you go shelling out for a new battery. That ain't the real problem. Cheap batteries from big stores don't last. Here's how it goes. Those bargain bin batteries with the too-good-to-be-true price tags, they're built like they're on a diet. Fewer lead plates inside, thinner materials, and corners cut every which way. Sure, they'll start your car for a while, but they don't hold up when things get rough. First hot summer, first freezing morning, or a few potholes down a bumpy road, and boom, they're on their way out. Thing is, a good battery's not just about starting power. It's about dependability. When you're stuck in the middle of nowhere or running late on a frosty morning, you want that thing to fire right up, not leave you staring at the dash like it owes you something. So, spend a bit more up front and you'll get solid build, better vibration resistance, and the guts to handle real-world driving. It's not luxury, it's peace of mind. You've been blaming the wrong thing. 
Folks come in thinking they've got a bad battery, slap a new one in, and drive off feeling good. For a while. But a few weeks later, same story, different morning. Click, click, dead again. Why? Because the battery wasn't the root of the problem. That's just where the symptoms showed up. Could be wonky wiring bleeding off power, a dodgy alternator not doing its job, or even a janky aftermarket install that's pulling juice while the car's asleep. Sometimes, it's just plain old driving habits. Short trips, no long runs, letting the car sit too long. All that takes a toll. Bottom line? Replacing the battery without finding the real culprit is like changing tires when your alignment's shot. Sure. It feels better for a minute, but you're headed back to the shop real soon. Do it once, do it right, and your wallet'll thank you later.